Hey, what's up, my friends? So finally, right, my annual income trading has come to an end. So right now, right, I'm actually back to my normal work schedule. I can, you know, produce my videos at the comfort of my own time, own target, right? So you can see my face if any of you are interested. So yeah, that, that, that concludes the end of my annual income training been to the jungle for the last couple of weeks, right? It's a good experience, you know, catch up with my friends, my long-time buddies. So now, back to trading. So I've received an email, right, from Saif, right? Saif dropped me an email. He said, that, you know, hey, Rainer, you know, as a trend trader, as a trend follower, which are the best indicators to use? So for me personally, right, if you're, my answer to Saif is this, right? I personally use the average true range indicator and I use moving average. I use the 20 and 50 exponential moving average. These are the only two indicators I use. But that aside, right, you don't have to use these two, right, because I've seen other traders using a triple moving average in their trend following approach. They use the Bollinger Bands. So there's a few indicators that you can use and there's absolutely no reason why you must follow mine. I think it's more importantly for you as a trader to find which set of indicators works best for you. So that aside, right, I hope I've answered your question, Saif. And in this week, right, back to the markets, we'll be talking about sugar, we'll talk about the New Zealand dollar, and much more. So all this and more in this week's market analysis, I'll see you there. Alrighty, so this is the weekly chart of sugar. So sugar, you see that it is in a very clear, distinct downtrend with a series of lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, lower highs. You get the drift. And yep, the trend is still towards the downside in the longer term perspective. Another thing to highlight out is that the blue line over here is the 50 period moving average. The red line is the 20. And one thing you tend to notice is that Sugar tends to mean revert back towards the 50 period moving average, right? Over here, 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 and the previous two times it touches the 20 and bounce off and touches the 20 and bounce off. So when you look at it from the longer term perspective, you can expect this entire zone here to be acting as a dynamic resistance. So how would you go about you know trading sugar? So what I see here is on a daily chart perspective, I'm currently looking to short sugar and the area that is of keen interest to me is this swing high over here. Because notice on the daily chart, we have a confluence of this uh, resistance over here as well as the blue line over here which is currently acting as a dynamic resistance. So this area is definitely an area to short for me on sugar. All right, there, there are two ways you can go about it. Number one is you can either short, place a sell limit order in that zone, or number two, you can wait for a form of a confirmation in waiting for a candlestick pattern like the pin bar or an engulfing pattern, you know, before you, you take a shot in this for this trade. So that's my take on sugar. So up next, let's have a look at New Zealand dollar, shall we? New Zealand dollar, this is the weekly chart. And again, very clearly you see on the weekly chart, New Zealand dollar currently respects the 20 EMA, which is this red line over here, right? We have a first test, right? Another second test. And right now, right, over the last few months, you see that price is, you know, below the 20 EMA. Yes, you know, not even retraced far enough to even test it. So it's telling you that, you know, the path of least resistance is still towards the downside. So on a daily chart, you can see that for New Zealand dollar, Right now, this is a key area to watch for because this is the resistance area and it coincides with the the zone, right? Dynamic resistance in between the 20 and 50 period moving average as well. So this area is definitely an area to watch for for the New Zealand dollar. So that's my watch list as well, New Zealand dollar. So up next, for those of you who want to trade, for example, say trade, the dollar weakness, right? If you want to trade a dollar weakness, meaning that you think that the USD would weaken over time, what you should be paying attention to is currently the pound dollar. Because looking at the pound dollar, it is, in terms of relative strength, it is one of the stronger major currencies right now. Looking at this chart of the pound dollar, you see that it's actually putting up, I would say it's ranging actually, it's ranging right between here and somewhere here. 
But compare it with the other major currencies like the new, like the Aussie dollar, we have a downtrend over here, a very clear, distinct downtrend. Or even the New Zealand dollar, which we seen earlier, a very clear, distinct downtrend. You notice that the pound dollar, which is this chart over here, it's pretty strong compared to the other major currencies. So for those of you who are looking to play the weak of the dollar, meaning you expect the, the British pound to strengthen against the dollar. This is a potential, I would say, a market that you want to pay attention to because right now you have prices ranging between here and here and here as well as here. Between these two zones, right? This is the resistance, I'll call it R. This is the support. And notice that the support, you the zone is actually quite big because, you know, it's actually basically, you know, from these lows over here, and up to you know these highs over here so this support area is pretty large so for me personally i don't like to trade when the zone is so large because you have no idea at which particular area in the zone where you know price would actually reverse from so usually i don't like to trade to trade such uh, large zones so instead right if you're looking to play the dollar weakness what you'll be looking is for a strength of the british pound against the dollar so you'll be looking for a breakout setup so at the looks of it right now, you can see that this black line which I've highlighted over here, it's currently a, I would say it's the high of 2015, it's, a, it's a, the high of 2015, that's right. So it's also a resistance area as well. So right now we have a series of higher highs here, sorry, higher lows, higher lows, higher lows, higher lows. And this sort of took out the recent lows, but what I would like to see is price, you know, crawling up higher and to watch whether this area, this high over here can be taken out because if it can be taken out right you can expect bullish prices for the pound dollar so that aside right the pound dollar is something that i'm watching out as well because if this black line over here this black line over here gets taken out whereby price trades higher i'll be bullish on the pound dollar and i'll be looking for long opportunities on the pound dollar so that aside that's my take on the pound dollar and it's also for those of you who are actually currently interested to play the dollar weakness so up next, let's talk about crude oil. So crude oil is a trade that I was in for a few weeks. So I'm not sure if any of you recalled, but let me scroll the chart backwards. Notice that I mentioned that crude oil, we had this double bottom over here. This was the resistance. Then when price took out above the resistance, in the short to medium term, right, it is bullish because right, this swing high over here was taken out. Then price rallied and started consolidating here. So at this juncture, I commented that it is a deciding factor because if price were to break out above this resistance over here, it will show that the bull will be in control so we can expect higher prices. However, if the lows over here gets taken out, it's telling you that the bears are regaining control and there could be further momentum back towards the downside, resuming its longer term trend. Because if you scroll back far enough, you notice that crude oil is still currently you know, in a longer term downtrend. So that aside, where I decided to got short was when price broke out of this low right then it retraces forming a flag pattern i got shot over here it triggered my shot was in the money then over the last two days right i got stopped out on my of my trade based on my trailing stop loss when price traded above the 20 period moving average so i was basically trailing my stops just beyond the 20 ema and i got stopped out last friday so in terms of profit i think it's about 1.5 r nothing too fantastic but basically periods like me for me right now is basically a series of small losses small wins so they basically cancel each other out so just hoping for a, for for me to catch a bigger trend so for me to you know bring up my equity curve to new highs so that's what happened for me on crude oil currently on crude oil the daily chart i'm not seeing any trading setups so with that right let's let's see if we have another pair that we can talk about so let's talk about maybe pound Canadian, shall we? It's a trade that I'm also currently still in. So where I got long on the pound Canadian is that I noticed that it's in an uptrend and I saw this bullish flag pattern over here. So I went long on the break of the flag pattern and emotionally, this is not an easy trade compared to crude oil because you know, if you've seen crude oil previously over here, notice that the trade basically went in my favor pretty, pretty I mean, almost instantaneously when I went short, right, it's, uh, it hardly went against me and it's just a one-sided affair in crude oil just towards the downside. Easy trade to handle emotionally. But for the pound Canadian, for newer traders, this may be, I would say, emotionally harder to handle. And here's why. I traded this flag pattern over here. Price went in my favor. 
So new traders, most traders will be happy, right? Hey, I'm in the money, right? Feeling good. And then what happened next? Price went against me, putting you in the red, out of the money. Next thing you know, price rallied higher, right? You think that this will be a legitimate breakout. You see higher prices, so you feel good once again, oh, you know, in the money, right? Everything is beautiful and rosy. And then what happened next? Pam, pam. Two large bodied candles against you. And right now you are currently, right, back to where you were when you traded this, right, near your break even entry. So again, emotionally, if you look at it, it is difficult to to handle for new traders because you know they are watching their PNL fluctuate between positive and negative, and they they start doing all sorts of weird, funny decisions. For example, maybe they couldn't take this emotional trauma anymore, and they decided to bail out their trades in advance, right? Because they don't want to to endure this so-called pain when they are trading pound Canadian. But what is actually the right thing to do? If you ask me, the right thing to do is to actually follow your trading plan. Just that's it. As simple as that. Follow your trading plan. And this is why I've been reiterating over and over again on why it's so important to have a trading plan. It's because of moments like this where the trades get t gets tough on your nerves, right? Where you watch it go in your favor, it goes against you, and you get very distracted. You feel very emotionally drained out. And this is where your trading plan comes into play because all you need to do is to look back on your trading plan and it will tell you exactly what you should be doing right now. For me, my trailing stop loss is below this 50 EMA over here. That's where my stop loss is and that's it, right? I feel perfectly comfortable. It's either I'm going to stop out when over here if price trades lower or the trend will resume, right? Taking out these highs over here. This is it. This is the only two possible outcomes. And for me, there's nothing to feel, I would say, and anxious about because everything has been predefined ahead of time. I know how much I'm willing to lose and if I'm right, I know where to get out if I'm wrong. So basically, I already, I already have a predetermined set, a predetermined loss that I'm willing to take. So that's all I need to do. All of this has been predetermined in my trading plan. So trading, you know, sometimes you have easy trades whereby trades just go in your favor almost instantly and there are trades like this. It takes time to play out. You don't know whether it's going to be a winning trade or whether it's going to be a losing trade. It fluctuates between, you know, positive and negative, positive and negative and for who knows, you know, it may just, you know, stop you up for a loss after a, a battle with yourself after, you know, two weeks to a month. So this is it, right? This is the reality of trading. Always have a trading plan, always trade prepared and all this emotional trauma, you know, can be reduced to a minimal. So, yep, that's all I have for you in this week's market analysis. I hope you find it useful. If you have any comments, any questions, just feel free to leave in the comment section below. So, with that, I wish you good luck and good trading. I'll talk to you soon.